Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more Overly Sarcastic Productions, this time, Miscellaneous Myths, and I sent this. This is a short one, but it'll probably be very fun. Uh, before we dive in, make sure you go check out the links in the description box, make sure you join the Discord. Um, now, let's just dive right in. So Apollo's got a bit of a reputation when it comes to how his relationships generally end. I mean, for a guy with an oracle on his payroll, he was really bad at finding people who would actually date him. I mean, no. Daphne, Castalia, Cassandra, Acantha, Bolina, Acro, Lucadis, considering- Wait, hold on, there's a bunch of stuff. Date him. I mean, Daphne- A naiad transformed by her father laid on into a laurel tree at her request. A nymph transformed by Apollo into a vision-granting fountain after she rejected him. It's gonna take a while. Sandra, a chosen princess who was not won over by the gift of prophecy, subsequently cursed. Apollo, no! Don't curse people for rejecting you! I stop! Kantha, a nymph who rejected Apollo and scratched his face, turned into a spiky plant. A cactus. Why Apollo has a thing for nymphs. A mortal who flung herself into the sea to escape Apollo, subsequently rendered immortal. Well, at least she got a reward out of rejecting Apollo. Oh, this is a different person. Another person who escaped Apollo. A Croy, a mortal who flung herself into the sea and a boat to escape Apollo. A mortal who flung himself off a cliff to escape Apollo. Considering how many of Apollo's potential dates flung themselves off of cliffs or turned into various pieces of local flora just to avoid him, it's amazing the poor guy even tried anymore. But surprisingly, Apollo did manage to have a few functional relationships. Nice. Kind of. At the very oh. least, there were relationships he was in where he wasn't actually directly responsible for their tragic resolutions. The most oh. famous of these is probably the romance of Apollo and Hyacinthus. Now, Hyacinthus is a young Spartan prince, and his primary defining feature is that he's super pretty. There's also nice. apparently some evidence that he might actually be a pre-Hellenic deity of some sort. Anyway, bottom line is he's majorly cute, and Apollo goes all head over heels for him. Surprisingly... Hi, name's Apollo. Want to be graced with my presence for the rest of your life? Considering Apollo's track record, springing this on Hyacinthus does not send him screaming into the hills or turn him into a plant, and instead they end up getting along. Sure. <laughs> that never works. Famously, so that's cool. Unfortunately, forever. Oh boy. Um. I just worry that my culture's powerful military and obsession with physical fitness will cause people in the future to disregard our incredibly progressive societal structure in favor of characterizing us as some kind of meat-headed boys club. You know. I mean, Spartan women are educated landowning and actually allowed to, do, to exercise and do sports like the boys. The only difference is they don't join the military. Athens executes educated women and we're the boys club? I just can't shake the feeling we're going to be flanderized into some cardboard frat house while Athens is held up as a beacon of civilized progress. Also, I hope everyone knows we wear armor when we fight because that'd get weird otherwise. Everyone involved, Apollo isn't the only one who noticed Hyacinthus, and the lad actually has another deific admirer in the form of Zephyr the West Wind. Also, unfortunately, Zephyr has no idea how to express his feelings properly and just ends up stewing in his own jealousy while Apollo and Hyacinthus run around <laughs> doing cute couple things. Also, Aww. also, unfortunately, Zephyr Yes, I'll murder him. Scribes to the if I can't have you, no one can school of romance. So one day when Apollo is showing Hyacinthus how to throw a discus, Zephyr decides to take the opportunity to kill Hyacinthus by shifting the winds and sending the discus into the side of his head. So that sucks. Apollo transforms the dying Hyacinthus into a flower to preserve his life and beauty forever, writes a little bit of emo poetry on the petals, and goes off to cry to her. There, there, big guy. At least he's a nice flower. Hermes about it. On the plus side, this love interest didn't turn into a plant until after the second date. Yeah. On the other hand, he didn't get to turn into a god like Psyche of Ganymede, so Hyacinthus did still kind of end up with the short end of the stick. Pressing yeah, he did. Small, there are a lot of stories about Greek pretty boys turning into sure flowers. Narcissus is the big one, but he's obviously not the only one. We just watched that one. There's zero mythological evidence to support it, but I like to think that Dionysus runs a bar on Olympus where everyone comes to chill and or drown their sorrows. I 100% agree with this statement. By the light Zeus it definitely has the most mortal lovers who meet horrible ends, but Apollo is usually directly responsible for his lovers meeting horrible ends. Frequently, the price of turning him down is getting cursed or turned into a piece of landscape or something. Right, and yeah. I wonder, wonder if Artemis spends her time to... chilling on the moon, watching Apollo be the world's worst dude-scorned stereotype and cursing his potential significant others left and right. 
and just mutters, and my refusal to wallow in this sort of drama makes me the weird twitch. So and that was Miscellaneous Myths by Asynthus. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.